Now, the family of the late Basasa boss Gavin Watson wants an independent assessment of the accident scene. This is after his death yesterday morning when his car plowed into a bridge pillar near Oatambo International Airport. Police say there's no evidence at this stage suggesting foul play. They're probing whether anyone can be held liable for culpable homicide or gross negligence linked to the accident. Now, an autopsy may also bring new information to light. Forensic consultant Paula Sullivan joins us now live from London via Skype to answer some questions around this for us. Paula, very good evening to you and thanks for your time. Um, just looking at what the family wants at the moment, they believe that there might have been foul play involved. If you were to investigate foul play, what would you be looking for to prove that? Uh, well, you don't set out to prove foul play. What you do is you set out to establish the facts. In other words, what took place at the accident scene first. That's your first point of departure. So <clears throat> there would have to be a forensic investigation, which would look at various factors, including the um, evidence that's found at the accident scene. Now, the car has been taken away. So whoever was there at the scene, hopefully there was somebody there, took photographs. I have seen quite a number of photographs, media photographs. But one would like to know where the vehicle came to rest, where the vehicle impacted the concrete pillar, um, and then the damage inside the vehicle, one could work out the, the approximate speed within a range that the vehicle hit the pillar at and the direction it hit the pillar from. Um, then I mentioned um, one would have to try and locate witnesses. Um, it sounds like there's at this stage no witness to the accident or the incident, um, shall we call it, itself. But one would like to locate the last person who spoke to him. Um, if he travelled on that freeway um, in, 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 in South Africa, in, in the Gauteng area, we have the um, Gauteng um, Freeway Improvement Project, which has resulted in the installation of gantries. And those gantries record the registration number of every vehicle that passes under it and the time that the vehicle passes under it. From that, one would be able to gauge the speed that he was traveling at, certainly uh, as he passed the last gantry. Um, and then one needs to establish whether or not he had any business at the airport, because if he had no business at the airport, then what was he doing there? Yeah. Because it's clearly the off-ramp for the airport. One would have to establish, um, certainly from a post-mortem, what the actual cause yeah. of death was. I yeah. mean, um, if, if a person died, for example, of a heart attack whilst he's at the wheel of a motor vehicle, um, normally that vehicle would, would, you know, take on its own thing and do its own thing. One wouldn't normally press their foot hard on the accelerator. They would go limp and the vehicle mm. would eventually come to rest somewhere. Um, but those sort of investigation needs to be carried out. A forensic toxicology um, report would have to accompany the post-mortem yeah. um, to see if the deceased was under the influence of alcohol or drugs or anything yeah. of that nature. Well, Paul, you know that the other theory around this, or, or one of the other conspiracy theories, is that he might have um, committed suicide. This was his way uh, of uh, probably just dealing with everything that had happened around him. So would there be anything about his actions or his behavior prior to this accident that might give a clue as well? I mean, I'm just looking at a, a News 24 article. They've confirmed two, with two major airlines that he was not booked on any flights out of Johannesburg. They say they're checking with other airlines as well. Just 70 rand found in his wallet, ID and driver's license also found there. No cell phone or luggage in the car. Also, he, he drives apparently uh, an automatic car and this, uh, the standby car or this car that he booked at the last minute was a manual car. So as a forensic person, what is that already telling you? Well, at, at, those <laughs> at the moment, that's not enough information to tell you anything. So what one would also want to do is understand what he was doing in the last two, three days. Um, the meetings he attended, what comments he made, you know, the, it, it's, you can't jump to conclusions. And I imagine there'd be a lot of people doing that. I must say, the early indications would point to it not being a normal accident. Mm. I mean, I've, I've spent a couple of hours on Google Earth looking at all the freeway bridges in Johannesburg, um, where there are concrete pillars that you could possibly crash a car into and 
there's only three, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. So the rest, they've all got con um, steel barriers that will prevent you from, from driving your vehicle directly into them. So, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a hell of a coincidence that the vehicle hit that particular uh, concrete pillar. Um, it's my understanding that he wasn't wearing a seat belt. You yeah. don't have to be going at high speed. If you're doing 60 kilometers an hour in a Toyota Corolla, remember this, 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 this vehicle is not a new car. Um, it's not fitted with the latest safety devices. If he was driving um, something like a, a Volvo or a BMW or Mercedes or a Land Rover, um, they're a lot more robust and, and they have airbags that pop out all yeah. over the place. Um, but in a car like this, no seatbelt on. <clears throat> By the way, the fact that there's no seatbelt on would disable if there is a steering wheel airbag and the seat belt isn't in use although it sounds to me like the seat belt somebody said was plugged in behind him yeah that's what uh, they're reading mm. yeah so if the seat belt was plugged in behind him then the if there's a steering wheel airbag it would have activated mm. um but even so if a person isn't strapped in and he hits a concrete pillar at 60 kilometers yeah. an hour Mm, yeah, even 50 or 40 kilometers an hour, it's certain death. Yeah, but Paul, uh, if, I, if I can just ask you very quickly, we are out of time, but uh, very quickly, if you can tell us how long would it usually take you uh, or, or take somebody uh, who is investigating this to come up with some kind of answer, judging by the wreckage uh, and just what we know so far, to come up with some kind of answer for the family? Early answers, probably a month, six weeks. Okay. All right. Thanks very much for that forensic consultant, Paul O'Sullivan.